Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my another video and in this video we are going to talk about uh, why you should use Nest.js. So let's say you wanted to build a you are a front-end developer or a back-end developer and you wanted to build some APIs and what you can do is for building the APIs either you can use Express or you can look for some back-end framework right. So either you if you are using if you are a JavaScript developer then you will obviously choose some of the JavaScript based uh, backend framework like okay Express, Kova, RPGS, Sales.js, Loopback. There are many. I'm specifically talking about Express here and and uh, specifically Nest.js framework which is built on top of Express. So wha what is Express and uh, why should we focus more on this? All those things we are going to talk about. So what is Nest.js? Why we should use it and how we should use it? Nest.js is a framework for building efficient, scalable Node.js uh, application. Why I'm talking about all this Nest.js because I have another channel and there I am talking about Nest.js a lot. Since a couple of years, each and every video directly and directly talks about Nest.js, Node.js, API development. It's like it fully supports TypeScript and uh, if you're already aware about Angular framework, then you are really going to love Nest.js because it's modular, you create controllers, services, providers and uh, all these things. It also Nest.js provides a layer of opinionated structure because it provides you the express adapter and a fastify adapter. Let's say if you wanted to use a fastify based API development, then you can also create get the adapter, fastify adapter out of Nest.js. So now let's talk about uh, why why nest.js because the popularity of nest.js among any other framework is growing it's obviously really huge when we talk compare all these uh, node.js framework like feather.js nestify cells or happy koa loopback all these i mean no those are not even coming close because nest.js is widely accepted now even i see that people more and more are towards using Nest.js because they really like the structure. Some people who already who already loves the modular and um, constrained structure, and it fully supports TypeScript because earlier we used to face a lot of challenges in a migrating a simple Express JavaScript app to TypeScript. Now you use fully TypeScript opinionated framework Nest.js. Right, it is TypeScript compatible, it provides powerful CLI, it provides dom domain driven development. That means you can actually segregate your modules based on the domain, dependency injections, inversion of control. It uses third party modules, built in exception filters, loggers, config modules. I mean, Nessius provides its own set of modules, and those are nothing but a pre built module which you can use, like, okay, if you wanted to. Uh, writing an app in Express, you will look for okay, some module for logging, some module for lo uh, configuration management, some module for runtime uh, process management, and all. So, all these things are you can get Nest.js config, Nest.js logger, or some of our core modules are already there. Installation is simple, I will not go into the much details like how. We are going to write but uh, those are the things which i will be covering in my future videos like how you can get started and start learning and build apis using nest.js but this is something which you can get started using nest cli and uh, simply nest new it gives you the boilerplate structure code with the with, which contains you which contain nest.js baseline project which you can start using npm run start the basic things so what is the fundamental? What are the building blocks of Nest.js? Nest.js contains controllers, services, providers, or modules, uh, custom decorators. All these things are core to the Nest.js. If you have already worked on Angular and when you and then you call, come back to Nest.js, you really find the syntax similar because here also we are creating a module. In Angular, you are creating ng module. Then uh, adding the services, doing the dependency injection in the same way. Same way we are doing the dependency injection of services into services dependency injection inside a controllers. Controllers are exposing the API routes. 
because we are building either a REST or GraphQL based interface. So controllers gives you, enables you to configure the routing based on API v1 user, API v1 profile, API v1 account with the different HTTP methods because controllers are responsible for handling request and response. They take the request and response and based on that they process. Okay, what is the request? What is the request method? Get, put, post, delete, patch. What is the data in the body? What are the query parameter, path parameter? All these things are decided. Providers are like uh, nothing but these are the injectable classes or injectable decorators. They use injectable decorators and you can use, they can be, all these providers can be a services, repositories, factories and all. And these are the modules. Modules covers everything inside module. You will put your controllers or providers and you wrap and you create a small module. Now your root application can have multiple modules. Okay, auth module, user module, account module, and they all become one root modules. So this is how you can create the whole uh, graph. So this is, these are the providers. This is how you create your services and you inject the service. This is how you create a, this is how you register your provider. I mean, I'm not going much into the code, but just wanted to make you familiar with the basic things. We create a service, there is a controller, we inject the service inside a controller. Before that, we register the service and controller in the main module. So here is our service. We register that in the modules. Now this service can be injected. This is called dependency injection of service inside the controller. And this is the API route patch. <coughs> this is the API route which will <coughs> Which will, uh, which will expose an HTTP interface. That is when it, it triggered using HTTP GET, it will call this service and get all pets. I mean, whatever the mock data and all. Custom providers you can create. This is a little bit concept about what all different ways to create a provider like service using these different ways, use class, use value, use factory or use existing. So this is how standard providers uh, I will skip this part because I, I will also be talking about code. So these are the four different ways in which you can create, a, you can you can register the provider using use class, uh, use value, use factory and use existing. You can see use value. This is the use class and use factory. Okay, and use existing. And this is how your folder structure looks like inside a cat. Cats can be a domain module. Inside you can create uh, your interface, types, DTOs, controllers, services, and root module. So things are actually uh, really clean and structured when you use Nest.js for API development. And uh, these are the building blocks. What, uh, what all things you contain inside a add the read module. So add the read module, add the read injectable, add the read controller. These all are, all are uh, Annotations which has their own meaning in TypeScript using Nest.js common. Nest.js gave them definition. What is at the rate controller? What is at the rate injectable? What is at the rate providers? Right. So this is how we are. This is a root module, right? Inside root module, we have a providers. We are exporting the provider so that any other module can use this particular service. So Nest.js overall is fun. I mean, uh, when you go through all these things, Nest just provides us the really nice way, nice and clean way of building the APIs. And it has really nice TypeScript support. You can create a, a middleware, you can create a, your custom logger, you can create a config management system, and you can build REST API, GraphQL APIs, any kind of interface you can build with the Nest.js. So that's why Nest.js is getting popular. Uh, you can build a simple express or GraphQL server. We will focus on the express, uh, so, sorry, REST API based uh, development instead of doing a GraphQL based development. And uh, this is pretty much why, what and how Next.js is getting popular and it's everywhere. And you, you should also be able to build the APIs using simple Next.js. We'll talk about Next.js microservices, how to simply execute a simple Nessius project and all those things.